Hi, welcome to this Corp Maths video. In this video, we're going to go through the video solutions to the compass directions practice questions. If you need any extra help on compass directions, if you go to corpmaths.com forward slash contents and scroll down to video number 27B, there's a dedicated video tutorial there on compass directions. Alternatively, you can scan this QR code. But in this video, we're going to focus on the video solutions to the practice questions. So let's get started. So first of all, we have got question number one, and it says shown below is a map of the landmarks in a town. So we've got these landmarks, and part A says which landmark is due south of the post office. So as you can see, we've got here that north is going up, so we've got north, and then we've got east, south, and west. So never eat shredded weight, or however you remember it, north, east, south, west. And just to say, I do like shredded weight. Now if we have a look, the post office is here, and we're looking for the landmark that is due south. So if we go down, we can see that would be the bus station. So which landmark is due south of the post office? That would be the bus station, the bus station. Okay, part B. Part B says which landmark is due west of the shop? So if we go to the shop, we're looking for the landmark that is west. So that's going to be in this direction. And that means that that would be the stadium. So the stadium is due west of the shop. So the stadium. Okay, next part says, what is the compass direction of the bus station from the school? So we're at the school because it's from the school. So if we go to the school and we want to get from the school to the bus station. So we've got, here's the school. We want to go to the bus station. So we want to go this way. That's the compass direction that way. And as you can see, that would be east. So it would be east. And that's it. Okay, let's have a look at our next question, question two. So question two says five towns are shown on the map below. So we've got these five towns, Sandcliff, Donhampton, Milton, Leek, and Castleton. And we've got the north is this way up. And part A says, what is the compass direction of Leek from Donhampton? So it says from Donhampton, so from Donhampton. So we're in Donhampton, and we want to find the compass direction of Leek. So that would be, if we're at Donhampton, we want to go down this way. So that would be, if north's up, that means it down would be south. So that's going to be south. And part B, part B says, what is the compass direction of Donhampton from Sandcliff? So from Sandcliff, so let's go to Sandcliff. So that's here. I want to know the compass direction of Donhampton from Sandcliff. So we want to find the compass direction of Donhampton. So we've got north, east, south, and west. We want to go this way to Donhampton, so that will be east. So that's going to be east. Okay, next part, part C. Part C says, which town is northeast of Leek? So let's go to Leek to begin with. So here's Leek. And we want to go northeast. So we've got north, east, south, and west. And then in the middle, we would have northeast. Down here, we would have southeast. Down this way would be southwest. And in this direction would be northwest. Now we want to find which town is, and if we could just go back in, which town is northeast of Leek? So here's Leek. We want to go northeast. That's going to be that way. So that would be Milton. So Milton is northeast of Leek. So Milton. Okay, let's have a look at question number three. So question number three says, the map below shows five towns on an island. So as you can see, here's an island, and we've got five towns on that island, and they are Redville, Newtown, Greenham, Leek, and Waterhampton. And we're told that this way is north, so going up is north, and we've got a scale that one centimetre represents 10 kilometres. And then part A says, which town is the furthest south? So we've got north, and then we've got east, south, and west. So furthest south would be Waterhampton. So let's write that down. Waterhampton is the furthest south, Water. Hampton. Okay, part B. Part B says, which town on the map is the furthest west? So we've got north, east, south, west. So the west is going to be to the left. So the furthest west would be the town that which is furthest to the left. So that's going to be Newtown. So Newtown is the furthest west. So let's write that down, Newtown. Okay, next we're told there's an airport that's 30 kilometers due west of Greenham. Show the airport on the map with an X. So it's 30 kilometers. Now remember, on the map, we had a scale. It said that one centimeter represents 10 kilometers. So 30 kilometers would be three centimeters because 30 divided by 10 is equal to three. So that'd be three centimeters. So on the map, it's going to be a distance of three centimeters. And we need to mark that airport on the map with an X and it's due west. So we need to go three centimeters west of Greenham. So let's go up and do that. So let's go back up to our diagram. And as you can see, one centimeter represents 10 kilometers. So 30 kilometers would be three centimeters. And here's Greenham here. And we want to go 30 kilometers west. So that's never eight shred of weight. So west is going to be this way. And on the diagram, that will be three centimeters. So you get your ruler and you're going to measure three centimeters in this direction. So wherever on your diagram three centimeters is, you mark three centimeters across. And then that will be the location of the airport. So the airport will be here. It's 30 kilometers, which is three centimeters west, which would be to the left of Greenham. And then you just make sure on your page that's three centimeters. And that's it. So that's where the airport would be. It'd be three centimeters to the left of 
Greenham. Or in real life, it would be 30 kilometers west of Greenham. And that's it. Okay, let's have a look at our next question, question number four. So question number four, we've been given this diagram. So we've got this grid and we're told the one centimeter represents 10 meters and we've got north, which is up. So that would mean it would be east, south and west, never each shredded weight or however you remember it. Okay, let's have a look at our first part. So we're told the point A is 30 meters north of point P and we've been asked to mark A on the grid. So let's go up and we're told that A is 30 meters north. Now on this diagram, as you can see, north is up, so A is going to be up, it's going to be above P, and we're told that's 30 metres. Now if we have a look at the scale, we're told that 1 centimetre represents 10 metres. Now we're told that A is 30 metres north of P, so 30 metres would be 3 centimetres on our diagram. Now if you get your ruler and measure 3 centimetres, or on this question I think it's a 1 centimetre grid, so if you actually measure it you see that's a centimetre, that's a centimetre, that's a centimetre, and so on. So 3 centimetres would be here. So that means that the point A would be here, and let's just label it A. So that's it. So A is 30 metres north of P. And on our diagram, it would be 3 centimetres above P. And that's it. OK, let's have a look at our next part. So the next part says the point B is 20 metres west of point P. So we're going to go to point P and we want to go 20 metres west. So let's do that and mark on where point B is. So here's P. We want to go 20 metres west. Now west is to the left here. So we're going to go to the left. And it's 20 metres. That's going to be 2 centimetres because 1 centimetre is 10 metres. So 2 centimetre represents 20 metres. So we want to go 2 centimetres to the left. You can use your ruler and they also remember this is a centimetre grid. So it's 1, 2 centimetres to the left. And that be the point B. So the point B is 20 metres to the west, which is two centimetres left of point P. And that's it. Okay, let's have a look at our next part. So the next part says point C is south east of point P. And just remember, if we've got a point, we've got north, east, south and west. And then we've got north, east, south, east, south, west and north, west. And because it's southeast of P, so if we go to P, southeast will be down this way, it'll be to the bottom right, it'll be going down diagonally that way. And we need to mark a possible location for point C on the grid. So we're going to go to P and we want to go southeast. So southeast is this way, so we want to go down this way. And it just is mark a possible location. So we could mark on this point, we could mark on this point, we could mark on this point, this point, this point, this point. We could even mark in between them, but I probably would go for, you know, something like that. And I'm just going to label that C. And that's it. And that's a possible location of point C because it's southeast of P. And that's it. Okay, let's have a look at question number five. So question number five says, here's a map of a rural area and we've got some locations. We've got a wind turbine, a farm, a village and a school. And we're told that one centimeter represents five kilometers. So each centimeter on this grid, and if you measure, that should be one centimeter to each of the lines. So that's one centimeter, that's one centimeter and so on. And it represents five kilometers. And part A says, what is the actual distance off the farm from the school? So the distance off the farm from the school. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna get our ruler and we're going to measure this distance here. Now it should be five centimeters because it's a centimeter grid. So if you measure this distance here, this distance, it should be five centimeters on the diagram. And remember that one centimeter represents five kilometers. So if one centimeter represents represents five kilometers, that means that five centimeters would be five times that, and five times five is twenty-five, so it'll be twenty-five kilometers. So that means the distance between the farm and the school would be twenty-five kilometers. That's your distance, twenty-five kilometers. Okay, next we're told a lake is 30 kilometers south of the wind turbine. And we're told the mark and label the lake on the map. So it's 30 kilometers. Now 30 kilometers, each centimeter is five kilometers. So if we do 30 divided by five, that will tell us how many centimeters that will be. 30 divided by five is six. So it's going to be six centimeters because six lots of five is 30. So it means on our diagram, it's going to be six centimeters and it says south. Now remember north is up. So in our diagram, it's north east, south and west. So it's going to be six centimetres south of the wind turbine. So let's go to the wind turbine here and let's go six centimetres south. And remember, this is a centimetre grid. So it's one, two, three, four, five, six. So that's it there. That's where the lake will be. The lake is here. OK, next, we're told that a hill is 15 kilometres east of the farm. And we've been asked to mark and label the hill on the map. So 15 kilometres, so 15 divided by five, because each centimetre is five kilometres. So 15 divided by five is three. So that means it'll be three centimetres on our diagram, because three lots of five is 15. And we're told it's east. Remember, it's north, east, south, west. So it's going to be three centimetres east. So it's going to be to the right of the farm. And that's where the hill will be. So let's do that. So let's go to the farm and let's go three centimetres east. So go to the farm and three centimeters east, one, two, three, and that's it. So that's where the hill will be. So the hill will be here and that's it. Okay, let's have a look at our next question. 
Okay, question number six. So question number six says, Ruby is facing east and she turns 90 degrees anti-clockwise. Which way is she now facing? So let's start off by writing down our compass direction. So north, east, south, and west. And she's facing east, so she's facing this way. And she turns 90 degrees. Now remember, 90 degrees is a quarter turn. And she turns anti-clockwise. So a clock normally turns this way. So anti-clockwise will be this way. And she turns a quarter turn. So that means that it will move from here around to here. So that means she will now be facing north. So which way is she now facing? The answer would be north. Okay, question seven. So question seven says, Lloyd is facing west. So we've got never eat shredded wheat, north, east, south, west. He's facing west. So he's facing west and he turns all the way to facing south. So if he rotates clockwise around from this here to here, he's going to be turning for three quarters of a turn. So that'll be 90, 180 and 270 degrees. So he turns through 270 degrees. And if he actually went another 90, he'd be back to facing west, which would be a full turn, which is 360 degrees. But he's not, he's facing south. So he turns through 270 degrees. Okay, let's have a look at our next question, question number eight. So question number eight says Martina's facing north. So she's facing north. So she's facing north, north, east, south, and west. And she turns clockwise to west. So he tur she turns clockwise to whenever she's facing west. So she's going to turn clockwise, which is this way, until she's facing west. And we're asked, what fraction of a turn has Martine completed? Give your answer in its simplest form. So we could do this in terms of thinking about from north to east is a quarter turn and then to south is another quarter turn, and then to west is another quarter turn. So that is three quarters of a turn. So she's done three quarters of a turn, and that's our answer. She's turned through three quarters of a full turn, okay? Because she's gone from north to east, that's a quarter, then to south, another quarter, and then to west, another quarter. So she's done three quarters of a turn. That's one way to look at it. Another way to look at it is she's turned through 270 degrees, and if you write 200, and 70 out of full turn and if you cancel this down you could divide by 10 to get 27 out of 36 or 27 36 and then you can divide both of these by nine to get three quarters so again she's turned through three quarters of a turn okay let's have a look at question number nine so question number nine says the map below shows some landmarks in a town so we've got some landmarks the restaurant the town hall the hotel the harbor the park the monument and the train station and ryan is at the town hall so he's at the town hall so he's here that's where ryan is and he walks directly to the monument. So he walks directly to the monument. So we've got north going up, so north, east, south, and west. And he's walking straight to the monument, so he's going south. We write down his direction of travel as a three-figure bearing. So in terms of his directions, we've got north, east, south, and west. So we've got north, east, south, and west. Now let's write down what the bearings would be for directions of travel. So if you travel north, you're traveling on a bearing of zero, zero, zero degrees. Then if you rotate 90 degrees clockwise, you're then traveling this direction, which is east. So that would be not nine zero degrees. That's 90 degrees because you've rotated 90 degrees from north. If you're facing north and you rotate to south, you rotate through 180 degrees. So south is 180 degrees. If you're facing north and you rotate clockwise to facing west, you rotate through 270 degrees. So as a bearing, that would be 270 degrees and so on. So the question says, what is his direction of travel as a three-figure bearing? Now, he's at the town hall. He's traveling to the monument. So he's traveling south. So that would be 180 degrees. So let's write that down. 180 degrees. Part B. Part B says, what is the three-figure bearing off the harbour from the hotel? So from the hotel, so the hotel's here, and we want the bearing to the harbour. So we want to travel from the hotel to the harbour. So that's going to be east, and as a bearing, that would be 0, 090 degrees. So that would be 0, 090 degrees, 90 degrees. It's a 90 degrees angle clockwise from north to go east. And part C, part C says, what is the three-figure bearing off the hotel from the park? So if we go to the park, and we want the bearing off the hotel, from the park so if we're at the park and we want to go to the hotel we're going to be going this way so that's going to be going north east it's in between north and east and it's in the middle so it's going to be north east now if north is zero 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 degrees and east is 90 degrees which is not nine zero degrees that's going to be in the middle so that's going to be a 45 degrees angle from north so that means there's a bearing it'll be zero four five degrees and remember the bearings have to have three digits so if it's less than 100 make sure you put that zero in front so the bearing off the hotel from the park it's a north easterly direction so it's going to be zero four five degrees so let's write that down zero four five Okay, then we're told that later that day, Ryan leaves the monument and walks directly to a landmark on a bearing of 225 degrees. Towards which landmark is Ryan walking? 
So he's traveling on a bearing of 225 degrees and he's at the monument. So let's go to the monument and figure out what's in the direction of 225 degrees. So Ryan's at the monument and he's traveling on a bearing of 225 degrees, 225 degrees. So if he's here and north is up, so north is this way, East would be that way, and east is 090 degrees, where he's not going 90 degrees, he's going 225 degrees. South would be 180 degrees, so he's not going south, that's only 180 degrees. West is 270 degrees, so he's not going as far as west, so if he's rotating, he hasn't rotated to west, so he, it looks like he's going to be going to the train station, and let's just show that. So if he's going this way, which is southwest, let's see what the bearing for southwest would be. So it's in the middle of 180 and 270. In between those is 90 degrees, and half of 90 is 45, so if we add 45 degrees on to 180, let's see what we get. So 180 plus 45 would be 225 degrees. So the bearing for travelling southwest would be 225 degrees. So that means that Ryan's at the monument, he's travelling on a bearing of 225 degrees, which is southwest. So that means he's travelling to the landmark, which is the train station. So let's write that down, he's travelling to the train station. Okay, let's have a look at our next question. So question number 10 says, the bearing of a lighthouse from a port, so we've got a port, and the bearing of the lighthouse from the port is 270 degrees. So if we're at the port here, so there's the port there, and then north would be, north would be the bearing 000 degrees, east would be over this way, which is 090 degrees, because to travel east, you would rotate for an angle of 90 degrees from north. To go south would be 180 degrees, because if you're facing north to travel south, you'd have to rotate clockwise through 180 degrees. And then to travel west would be over here, and that would be if we rotated from north all the way around, it would be 90 plus 90, which is 180, plus another 90 would be 270 degrees. So if the bearing of the lighthouse from the port is 270 degrees, it means it's going to be in this direction, which is west. So the lighthouse is west of the port. Okay, question number 11. Question number 11 says, the bearing of a school from the bus station is 135 degrees. Complete the sentence below using the correct compass direction. So the school is something of the bus station. So we're starting at the bus station, so let's put a little cross, that's the bus station, let's call it the bus station, bus station. And we want to find out which way 135 degrees would be. And remember, bearings are measured clockwise from north, so if this is north, here, we want to rotate through 135 degrees. So if we're facing north and we rotate through 90 degrees, that would bring us this way, which is east, so that's 0, 090 0 degrees. If we rotated for another 90 degrees, we would be going south, which is 180 degrees, but we only want a bearing of 135 degrees. So that's going to be here, it's going to be this way. And it's actually in the middle, exactly in the middle of 90 and 180, because the difference between those is 90 degrees. If you half, that's 45 degrees. And 90 plus 45 would be 140. 35 degrees and that would be southeast so that means the school is southeast of the bus station so let's write that down the school is southeast of the bus station okay question number 12 okay let's have a look at question number 12 so question number 12 says even is traveling northeast so we've got north which is this way and then we've got east which is this way so northeast would be that direction there exactly in the middle so northeast and we've been asked to write down his direction of travel as a three-figure bearing so north is a bearing of zero 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 degrees east would be zero nine zero degrees because you rotate 90 degrees from north to go east so northeast would be in the middle and half of 90 is 45 so i remember it has to be a three-figure bearing so it's going to be zero four five degrees so that means that his direction of travel is 045 degrees. Okay, next we're told that Mason is traveling northwest. So never eat shredded weight. So he's traveling northwest, which is this direction here. So we want to find the angle clockwise from north around to the direction he's traveling. So we want to find the size of that angle. So from north to east would be 90 degrees. South would be another 90, that's 180 degrees. To west is 270 degrees, so if he was traveling west, it'd be 270. It's another 45, so if we do 270 plus 45, that'll tell us what the angle is from north clockwise round to, to northwest. So if we do 270 plus 45, that would be equal to, zero plus five is five, seven plus four is equal to 11, so put our one down, carry one, and two plus one is equal to three. So that'll be a bearing, so that'll be a bearing of 315 degrees, so 315 degrees, and that's it. So these have been the video solutions to the compass directions practice questions. I really hope you found this video useful. If you have found it useful, please like it and please subscribe to the YouTube channel. If you need any extra help on compass directions, there's a video tutorial there on compass directions. And also there's a video on bearings and corporate maps as well. And those videos will be useful for you as well. And if you like those videos, please like them also and subscribe to the YouTube channel. Uh, but again, I really hope you find this video useful. Thank you. Cheers. Bye.